from the basements of the beautiful Chrysler building in New York City, where our discount rent doesn't include any parking spaces, so I have to use rollerblades to get to work. This is The Scammies. I'm your host, Michael Robertson, and each episode, I'm trying to make you just a little bit smarter so you can spot the scams and the scammers and ultimately keep more of your own money. We're going to profile a scam detective in this episode, Jim Browning. He's a modern-day Jim Rockford. Remember him from the Rockford Files? He was a private detective, always working in the gray areas, running with some questionable characters, employing questionable tactics, and having a love-hate relationship with law enforcement who liked his goals but maybe frowned on his methods. Same is true with Jim Browning. I can't show you his picture for reasons that will be obvious shortly. But I can tell you he lives in Northern Ireland and started his career as a software engineer. As a hobby, he decided to do some scam baiting, which is where you call up scammers and take your time feigning like you're a dense victim and making their lives a little less productive. But using his software programming skills, he quickly developed some advanced hacking techniques, which he employs to infiltrate the scammers operation. You see, Jim does white hat hacking, which is when people use hacking not for evil, but for good. He openly admits some of what he does is illegal, but like James Rockford, it's always in the pursuit of good. For this reason, he operates under his Jim Browning pseudonym to hide his true identity. He's also careful not to reveal his secret techniques so he can continue to use them on scammers. Jim not only engages scammers, but he does his best to expose their operations, get refunds for victims whenever possible, and get authorities involved, all with surprising success. In a remarkable twist, Jim himself was successfully scammed in 2021 and tricked into deleting his entire YouTube channel. Yeah, the guy who's one of the world's most knowledgeable about scams fell victim himself. More on that in a bit, but first I want to profile some of his awesome scam busting escapades because they're epic. As scam detectives go, Jim may be one of the most famous. He's been profiled in New York Times, BBC, CBS, and other places. He's helped so many old people that AARP, the organization dedicated to helping people over 50, actually made a profile video of him. Here's a bit of it. The reason why I'm calling is, uh, I don't know if you're aware, but the whole thing is a scam. I can see that the scammers still have access to your computer. This is the way their scam works. He fights back against robocall scams and tracks frauds across the world. Can you turn your computer off as soon as you possibly can, please? He's not a detective. He's not a cybersecurity professional, but he is a tech-savvy engineer who's been turning the tables on robocallers and scammers. I, I don't know how much you bought, but just stop right $3, now. $3,000. And then he right. took my 17000 out of my account. I'm going to try and find out exactly who they are um, and eventually try to get something done about them. He's known on YouTube as Jim Browning. There, he posts videos of real-time tech support scams, refund scams, IRS scams, and many other techniques used to defraud people out of their money. Now, most scams have a similar setup. The scammer tells the person there's a problem with their computer or a problem with an order, probably a fake order, and eventually gets the user to download screen sharing software like Screen Connect or Team Viewer, Log Me In, etc. So then they can trick them by changing what the person sees on their own computer. Eventually, they trick the victim into sending them money. Now, where Jim excels is that while he's playing the part of the victim, so the scammers think they're gaining access to his computer, he's actually gaining access to their computer. And from there, he infiltrates their entire call center, often monitoring their internal cameras even. Here he is eavesdropping as the scammers laugh at a victim Pleading for sympathy. Suffer from depression. No, 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 sir. Everything will be okay. Don't worry, okay? Yes. <laughs> now promise me you won't cry again, okay? The reason so many admire Jim is because he's been remarkably successful as a one man operation at getting people their money back. Not just one victim, but a long list of them. 
Take a listen. I tackled a company who were making fake virus pop-ups. They called themselves Compico and they were in the Jaipur area of India. Although they did have an accomplice in the USA who was processing their payments. But the good news was that I was able to find out who all of their scam victims were and I was able to write to all of these people and get them to claim their money back. I did hand a lot of evidence to the Rajasthan police but of course I heard nothing back but the good news is that they most definitely shut down their operation and at least some of their customers now have their money back. Now Jim often eventually confronts the scammers themselves. He shocks and frightens them by showing their real name, real photo, location, company name, and sometimes boss's name. So they no longer think they're hiding behind a keyboard and a monitor. And he makes a deal with the scammers. He won't publicize their real name and photo if they divulge secrets about how their scam works. This way, he's constantly learning about operations, their new techniques that he can expose to the world and authorities and get better at busting future scammers. Watch. Hello. Hello, is that? So this is Alex. <laughs> I think surely at this stage we can cut out that pretense. Um, hi, Alex. Mm -hmm. hi. Look, we didn't quite finish the video. So do you want to talk me through the rest of this? I wanted fake name Alex to go back through the scam he attempted on me just two weeks before the day that I confront him. In that episode, he's showing a picture of the scammer with his wife and daughter. Wow. Now recently, Jim tried to learn more about money mules. Let him tell you about them. One of the most cruel ways that scammers steal money from people is to convince them to place their cash into a box and post it to a money mule. These money mules will pick up packages of cash delivered to houses all over the country. They're usually couriered overnight. It's all designed to minimize the risk of someone tracking this money back to the scammer. Now recently, Jim has grown a little bored so he started collaborating with other online scam detectives to take his operation to the entire next level. One of the people he's collaborating with is Mark Rober, a NASA engineer who's created a comical yet effective bomb to bust scammers. But with his bomb, nobody gets hurt. Watch. Among other things, Mark is the inventor of the glitter bomb, something which has a GPS attached and cameras, and we could even monitor who opens these packages. I've always been keen to see how scammers who are typically based in India manage to recruit money mules who are in a different continent. And by tracking packages and addresses, we may be able to find out how. Well, their collaboration revealed not just the names of the money mules, but how they craftily work to evade detection. They use stolen credit cards to book an Airbnb that they use as the drop location, but just one time. Here's the video. Hello. You guys give up? Oh yeah, thirsty for more. But for the first time in three years of glitter bombing criminals, someone didn't immediately throw the box outside and he just sat there with the wretched smell leaving the box untouched. And then as we waited, wondering what his game plan was gonna be, suddenly a bunch of NYPD officers started showing up and it didn't take them long to figure things out. It's a glitter bomb, it has a camera built into it. <laughs> There's a camera built into this. We had a phone number on the box and they called us up and I explained the whole situation and I'll just say there was some mutual admiration for each other's work. There are cameras in this thing as well? Because this is a hell of a 3D printed little thing you got here. <laughs> I mean, 
There might be cameras on there, officer. And as it happens, the reason a scammer would call the cops on himself is because he isn't a scammer. This is Gary. And it turns out he's a super nice guy. But Gary runs an Airbnb. And once you go in that door, there are two rooms upstairs that he rents out to people. So this wasn't a safe house at all. These scammers would use Airbnb to get a temporary address they would only use once. But if that's true, that meant the scammers must have been there yesterday. So Gary showed us his security footage and we saw this woman in an orange jacket who appeared right as the PI was talking with the FedEx driver up the street. She also looks directly at the camera and then decides it's probably cold enough outside to zip her jacket all the way up. Once the FedEx truck passes and she realizes he skipped by her, she hurries over to talk to him and when he told her he had nothing for her for that day, she walks right back to her car, never stepping foot inside the Airbnb. The PI's got all the license plates on the street that day and it turns out her name is Crystal. So that was the success of working with Mark Rober that Jim had. Now I mentioned at the outset that Jim got scammed himself. In what must have been a humbling act, he revealed in exact detail how he got scammed into deleting his entire YouTube account. I condensed it down to a summary. Watch this. You'll see that I was tricked into deleting my channel and well, it all started off with this email. I should explain first of all that YouTube is owned by Google and a lot of correspondence that I will get about YouTube will come from various Google accounts. Indeed, you have to have a Google account in order to get any ad revenue because it's Google that handles all of this part for YouTube. But let's have a look closely at this email and you'll see why it's a little bit more than your standard phishing mail. Firstly, it has genuinely come from Google.com. Most phishing emails will come from something other than Google or YouTube, but here the domain is correct. But what about the contents of the email? Why on earth did I think that this was legitimate email? The email itself wasn't that well formatted. There were capital letters where they shouldn't have been, but overall the English was just about okay and there were no spelling mistakes, a sure sign of a scam. The email simply said, Hi, please note that we have noticed that you have a duplicate AdSense account and as a result we will permanently suspend your YouTube account. If you're a creator on YouTube you'll understand what this means. AdSense is the way to gain revenue via uploading videos on YouTube. But here's where coincidence will help scammers. Just the day before I received the email I swapped to a new phone and managed YouTube through it. I put two and two together and assumed that because I was using a new device, somehow it may have generated this email. It's a bit like getting a fake Amazon phone call straight after you've placed an Amazon order. If it wasn't for that coincidence, I'm almost certain that I wouldn't have fallen for this scam. What I should have been paying attention to was the email address of this chat support account. It shouldn't have been creator-partners.com. It should have been YouTube or Google.com. But I was distracted. I was doing other things and I just wasn't paying enough attention. And as soon as I hit the replace button, seven years of work, 170 videos and 3.3 million subscribers were instantly lost. He gave me a link to a Google form. And only at this point was I certain that it was a scam. I was asked for the email address of the YouTube account and worst of all, the last confirmed password of that YouTube account. And only at this point did the penny drop and I figured out the whole thing was a scam. But eventually, four days later, YouTube were indeed able to restore my channel. But the biggest thing that I've learned out of the whole experience is that really anyone can be scammed and that includes me and you. The circumstances just need to be right. Well, it's disheartening when one of the premier scam experts revealed he was also a victim. But that just makes Jim more endearing because he shows he's got vulnerabilities just like everyone else. I fully expect a clever screenwriter to get a hold of Jim, buy his story rights, and turn it into a Hollywood movie or even a TV series. The world needs a new James Rockford, one for the digital era. And Jim's channel is loaded with incredible tales of fighting the bad guys and winning, which we all love. All they need to do is add a love interest and they're ready to go. Hey, Jim, don't sell those rights too cheaply. I'll leave a link to Jim's channel in the description. 
that's this episode of the scammies hit that like button if you want more episodes and click that subscribe button to be the first to be notified of our upcoming awards show thanks for watching Thank you.